disappointed I missed his first presentation. But today, he's going to talk about canoes and romance. And as a young boy, he was fascinated by both. John harbored dreams of becoming a naval architect until he found out that his chosen profession involved math and lots of it. Frustrated in this initial career choice, he turned instead to maritime history and maritime museums. He has followed his interest around North America to the Vancouver Maritime Museum, the Maritime Museum of British Columbia, the, Maritime, the Marine Museum of Upper Canada, the Pier Toronto, Toronto's Waterfront Museum, the International Yacht Restoration School, the Antique Boat Museum, and the Canadian Canoe Museum. Along the way, he has built and restored traditional wooden boats, taught boat building, and that's actually where I met John. He was actually working with a group of teenagers, girls, and they built a wonderful canoe. And he has also um, sailing, he's taught sailing and seamanship, designed and curated exhibits, and managed maritime museum artifacts and archives. As an active, an active freelancer, he writes regularly for the Wooden Boat magazine. His new book, Creating Exhibits That Engage, a manual from museums and historical organizations, has just been published. He's currently trying hard to complete the restoration of Clementine, his 1937 old town sailing canoe, so that he can get back on the water this summer, perhaps for a romantic moment or two. You can follow his boat projects, including the restoration of Clementine, and writing through his blog, Playing with Boats. Uh, and that is at authenticboats.com. Um, I can send that out, or John will put that on the website for you if you wish. And so with that, please give Ron, John, John, a warm shout out to It's just fun. <laughs> Smith saying, if you want to be a naval architect, my boy, you might better be a peanut vendor. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if Rob's experience bears that, bears that out or not. <laughs> um, people, when I do these talks and, and go on and on and on about things that I find interesting and, and maybe three or four other people in the world also find interesting, I'm often asked where and how it started. I think because people are secretly wondering, like, how on earth did you get interested in that? And so I have a slide here, and this for me is where it started. Thank you. Um, this is where this whole thing, this whole canoes and romance thing started for me. I waste a lot of time on eBay. Does anybody else here have eBay on their phone and buy stuff on the go train? <laughs> uh, and I bought this just because I thought it was so, it was so over the top. Um, you know, here's this woman uh, coming out of the tunnel of love in her birch bark canoe, and it's a Valentine. I actually gave this to my wife as a Valentine, but then I asked for it back <laughs> because it's part of the collection. And that got me started thinking about canoes and romance. And that gave me, first of all, uh, a license to buy more stuff on eBay, which is what we all want. Um, and secondly, it turned into something I started researching. It turned into an exhibit that I did on the way out of the Canadian Canoe Museum as I was taking up my current position. And an abiding interest because it bears on what I was talking about last time, and if you had the misfortune to sit to my last talk, which is the social history of pleasure building. This whole of Canoes and Romance thing is so much a part of the social history of pleasure building. I thought, well, let's just, let's just look into that a little bit further. Um, and so I wanted to uh, get you in the mood for what I'm going to say today. So I'm going to play you a little piece of music. Here's our volume. Up, up. 
Automobiles go around corners. The centrifugal force pushes people closer to the as the automobile goes around the corner. Sparking, in this case, is a synonym for cuddling out of doors. Spooning was the indoor cuddling synonym. So you can get in even more trouble in an automobile than you could in a bicycle. So bicycle, let's couples get out on their own. Automobiles, let's couples get on their own. What's the surprise? The canoe does the same thing, right? You can go for a canoe ride, and it can be innocent, or it can be less than innocent. But you're on your own, and you're unsupervised, you can go where you want to. This is a scene from the Charles River in Boston, which is sort of the epicenter of canoe courtship. And they're watching a regatta here, but on any given Sunday afternoon on the Charles River, people would have rented canoes from one of the three, four, five boat houses and boat builders that were there, and the river would be covered with couples in canoes. Not just any canoe, but a particular kind of canoe called a courting canoe. So if you look at this one in the foreground, you can see, first of all, he's paddling. She has no intention of paddling. She's leaning back on a big pillow. The canoe has these lovely long decks. And they both look quite, actually, quite comfortable. This is not going down in the Hani and running rapids. This is like flat water, comfort time canoeing. So out of this Sunday afternoon pastime in these boathouses grew a type of canoe called the courting canoe, distinguished by <coughs> several distinguishing features. First of all, a fairly high degree of fit and finish, this decorative painting on the bow, the striping. Um, the decks of these canoes began to get fairly long. This is already longer than the foredeck on a regular canoe, which is often, you know, six, eight inches long. This started a trend, just like tail fins on cars. And what happened is the decks got longer and longer. The net effect of that, of course, is that the available cockpit space in the canoe gets smaller and smaller. And the net effect of that is that the couple in the canoe gets closer and closer together. Ooh, yes. This progressed to the point where the canoes are beautiful objects, but they're damn near useless as a canoe. <laughs> There is a later courting canoe. This is an original and restored one. You can see here, again, the beautiful decorative painting. The decks are even longer now. Until finally you get to the point where there's very little canoe left. It's mostly cockpit. So there's a fort for him to sit on. But she's sitting on the floorboards, leaning back this way, talking to him as they're, as they're paddling. Uh, you can also accessorize your courting canoe with another unrestored example uh, with a gramophone. So that he could hear what was being played. To him. So it's her job to change the records and DJ. It was his job to canoe them up the river. These courting canoes are avidly collected. These are all from the collection of one guy named Ken Kelly, who has made this a specialty of his. Uh, terrible things to restore. This is these, this is one piece of wood. So these decks are steam bent, thin, cambered steam bent. You know, 18, 20, 22 inches wide, and often book matched like that, and they're awful things to restore, but the canoes themselves are beautiful, albeit a little bit hard to paddle, especially in the crosswind. So, the activity of being in a canoe and courting in a canoe produced a whole new kind of canoe. It also produced, and this is where my collection starts to come into it, a whole genre of postcards and other things. I just love this. Um, these people have taken a chaperone with them. I think it's a chaperone. Part of me also thinks perhaps it's the former girlfriend. Because <laughs> two of them look fairly happy, right? And one of them looks not happy at all. And I don't know, smooth sailing is intended to be ironic, but it doesn't look particularly smooth to me. They're awfully close, given the chaperone. Well, and she doesn't look like anybody's mother either, so I'm not sure. You know, the one in the middle is the Love chaperone. triangle? I, you, you tell me. <laughs> this is a postcard, and there'll be more postcards to follow. So, whole section on canoeing girls here. Um, cigarette card, uh, supposedly published by the American Canoe Association, featuring um, Kate Vaughn, the actress in this picture, the real Kate Vaughn in one of her roles, uh, famous for creating, among other roles, something called the skirt dance, which unfortunately Thomas Edison didn't film, so I wasn't able to find any moving picture footage of it. But the ACA published uh, a whole series of these cigarette card inserts of actresses and other uh, professional women dressed up in the colors of various uh, various canoe clubs. 
another postcard, the Canadian summer girl. Now, I'm not so sure about the seaworthiness of the crew, but she's paddling in. It looks sort of birch barky, but not quite, but she's out there among the water lilies. And the caption does say, the Canadian summer girl. So there she is as the epitome of leisure, summertime, waterborne romance. She's a bit more in charge, sitting in the right place in the boat, great grip on the paddle, sailor suit, again, the canoeing girl. This is the epitome of all the water women here. 20 years before this, this would have been unthinkable. Women were decorative objects. They were climbing. They did needlepoint. They read little books of poetry. They did not get out and do this. She's got her sleeves rolled up. She's <coughs> by herself. She's largely unsupervised. So a social revolution is taking place in the background behind all these images of canoeing. This one says, Greetings for the canoe season from a fair flower of the aquatic garden. You have to like the language here. She's again all dressed up, tagging her hand, waiting for someone to go out with her. Impossibly willowy young women in impossibly willowy double paddle canoes. There. Not exactly dressed for sport, but nonetheless out there, out there on the water in this greeting card. And then there's the, oh, won't somebody please take me out for a while? Please. She's actually sitting in the bow of the canoe. That's the story of the little, turn of this little sailor canoe. The shawl is just kind of draped. She's just like, oh, I wish, I wish someone would take me for a ride. <laughs> Another one through the rapids this time, right? So women are doing white water and birch bark canoes and sailor suits. We're really making progress here. All dressed up. Uh, and there she is, the canoeing girl, right? She has her sheet music, she has her paddle, sensible sailor dress, and she's ready to go out. What she needs, however, is a companion. And so we come to canoeing boys, because you can't have canoeing girls if you don't have canoeing boys. And there he is, there he is, a Canadian summer boy, the caption says. Tight t-shirt, maple leaf in the right place, nice white flannels, you know, appropriate shoes, Clean cut, clean shaven, nice firm jawline, the embodiment of canoeing masculinity. He's certainly the best possible example that goes downhill from there. These guys, on the other hand, clearly cannot get a date. And that's why there's five of them and a dog out of the canoe together. Uh, with their fraternity sweaters on. When I look at this, I also hear a voiceover from Transport Canada saying, these people are about to have a marine accident. Because <laughs> there's not a PFD in sight. Uh, Liz just pointed out five guys, one paddle. What, what's going on, really? <laughs> well, I think, there's, I think there's one in the stern, too. I think uh, okay. All right. But clearly, nobody looks up to the little friends so they're out on their own. They're looking for a day. Sometimes it's more overt. They're playing air paddle. This is the predecessor to air guitar. There we go. This is original courting behavior, just like fanning usher tail feathers, hoping to attract the female of the species. I don't see anyone. I don't either. So it's not working, is it? There's the backrest, right? There's her spot, but Joe is in it, not Francine. So they're trying. They really trying. Sometimes they were really over it. Caption in this postcard says, girls want it. They're just playing advertising. Right? Here we are, we got the pillows, we got the canoes, and we are so ready for a date, and no one, no one will talk to us, unfortunately. But they're ready. Then, of course, they do get together, and they go out in their canoes at the same time. Here we are at Cedar Point, Ohio, at the amusement park. Um, again, what's clearly a photography studio set. But what interests me in this is, first of all, the paddling style, because I think they drown if they went in an actual canoe. But secondly, look how apprehensive she looks. <laughs> Even being in a canoe in a photo studio. <laughs> so it's probably the first thing you didn't have to real one. This is what's known as a real photo postcard. So you would pose, they would take the picture and make it into an actual mailable postcard with the dress block and everything on the back. So you see over and over and over, you see these one antique postcard market there at the amusement park. Classic thing to do to get your picture taken there, but again, probably better for them that they're not in a real canoe. 
whole battle on the west coast of Seattle, on Black River in Seattle, paddling this amazing kind of Viking style of canoe. You look at the height of the stone. I've never seen an actual canoe that looks like that, but this is a photograph, so there must have been one going out there. Again, nice, pleasant body of water, typical afternoon. Everywhere you can see couples courting and being out of the water together in canoes. Uh, even in Quebec. Even in Quebec. I don't know if he's going to go very far. I think he's on a rock. Right? Like, they're not off to a good start, but he's done a little saying, would you get into my canoe? And perhaps she's asking him, do you have any idea what you're doing? <laughs> because your canoe is not currently in the water. Has the back rest there ready for her to recline against? Probably a pillow, maybe a bottle of wine as well. So come on board, let's go out. One of the neat things about canoes is it rhymes with so many words. There are so many puns and jokes you can make with the word canoe. If we were talking about xylophones, none of this stuff would work as well, but can we take a trip with you? Is that where the term canoodling came from? <laughs> well, your fire skipper, we're getting there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of you has to be in a canoe. You can be on shore as well and still be having an intimate, romantic canoeing, canoeing moment. Just you and I. And that again emphasizes the fact that this was a way to get away from prying eyes. You could paddle out on the lake down around the point, and nobody has any idea what you're doing. <laughs> End of the summer, very sad. So you're going home tomorrow. Oh. I'm devastated. Oh. I'm devastated. Very sad. <laughs> you do a side by side if you was beamy enough as well. In the background are a couple of the Charles River boat houses. You see this scene reproduced a lot. So there they're doing the side by side the parasol. He stuck his paddle in the mud. They're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter. They're exactly where they want to be. Those happy days when we were up and running together. And then a little cuddle. Obviously a staged photo, but a little cuddle. And a handsome little cruising, double paddle cruising canoe somewhere in what looks like the edge of a swamp. <laughs> but it doesn't matter to them because they're not looking at the scene we are. They're looking at each other. This one I love. It says, when we're together fishing, I have a feeling that poor fish has been jumping out of the water for half an hour. Because <laughs> I don't think they're paying any attention to the fish here, right? They're clearly having a serious interpersonal moment of, oh yes, fish, fish. When we're together fishing. Taking time to stop and smell the flowers, in this case, smell the water lilies, pick them as you paddle through. In an era of looser or no copyright restrictions, you also start to see if you collect this junk, as I do, the same image picked up and repeated. So there they are on a postcard, same folks on a playing card, too. So somebody just swiped that image, recolored it, and stuck it into a playing card. No copyright. You see a lot of that kind of very pastoral, you know, still water, flowers, reeds, rushes, beautiful young people out enjoying themselves. So this really is a appealing to a, a very <coughs> romantic sensibility. Again, with the parasol, sweet summertime. This is how you spend, how you spend your summer. Still with a collar on, right? Of course, because you have to be properly dressed. Still protected from the sun. Let's paddle forever. You can even have a canoe as a marriage proposal. Let's paddle forever. And you can't read the handwriting, but it says, her sleeve says Texas, or TX, and his shirt is written New York, and it says, New York would like to, honest. So I think this might actually be a proposal. Don't know how it worked out for them, but there they are, a waterborne proposal. And then finally, they thought they were alone. But Mr. Moon was still watching them. So they weren't as alone as they thought. And then drifting. I actually think it's their relationship that's drifting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for all we know, there's another canoe over here, and she's looking at the guy in the other canoe. I don't know. Just there's a lot, there's a lot going on in that one little image. And then some poetry, her hair of golden sunset glow, with the parasol. Little banjo music to keep her entertained, impress her with his skills. <coughs> this is good. So she, who's engaged to somebody else, it says in parentheses, 
we don't seem to be getting on very well. Something seems to be weighing you down. And he says rather gloomily, it's that diamond and sapphire ring in your left hand. We should be all right if it worked for that. <laughs> Going out for a little heart to heart and we talk it out. Mm. In a canoe. There's what better place to have a relationship crisis than in a canoe. And finally, speaking of love and other things, have you ever thought about writing rings of the proposal postcard? I think after they get married, they should buy a better canoe though, because this one has some awesome issues. And then we come to canoe. Oh. <laughs> a fabulous word. An absolutely fabulous word. And a lot of what we know and appreciate about canoodling will be laid at the feet of this man, the pantheon of great Canadians. Yeah. It's Pierre Scott. <laughs> Extensive research, including consultation with his son, who's an editor at the Spectator in Hamilton, has revealed that he may have said a true Canadian is but he never wrote it down, so it's apocryphal. However, as an apocryphal remark, it's in the category of those things that are so good that even if they aren't true, they should be true. <laughs> Many people have played on Britain's alleged statement, including sociologist Jeff Pierce, who titled his book about sex in Canada, How to Make Love in a Canoe. <coughs> Nothing to do with canoe in this book, so if you're going to buy it, don't read it for a canoe content. Uh, endless, endless humorous postcards in which this is one of the more suitable and mixed company ones. <laughs> and we all know what it is. And no less an authority on matters like this than Cosmopolitan Magazine actually rated the canoe canoodle. Now, I'm surprised. It only got three frames out of five, frankly, because I think it's a little more trippy than that, if you think back to the previous slide. But even Cosmo acknowledged that this is a thing. Whether it's truly Canadian or not, I don't know. Uh, my former colleague and dear friend James Raffin, who writes a great many books about these other things, said the modified version of that is a true Canadian is one who, never mind going out of his love and pretty, knows to take out the center of court <laughs> before they lie down. And some courting canoes actually had removable center forts. <coughs> so there you go. This is the chase version of canoe. And once again, somewhere in the Charles River, shortly after the first picture was taken, things are heating up a little bit. And then this whole trope of kissing in the canoe. So there is a time and a place for this. They're tied up to shore, so they're a little bit safer. Excuse me. Because if they do dump the boat, they can just walk to shore. Any of you are wondering where the canoe is better than the sailboat? This is that place. Not much room in the sailboat, plenty of room in the canoe to be in the middle as couples as couples do. Fine canoeing here, says the captain. And the little handwriting bug says, what does this remind me of? I wish I, I wish I knew. There's nothing on the back, unfortunately. And at the end of the day, it is better than powder. <laughs> Long after the canoe's on shore, the canoe romance continues. Still with the paddles on their shoulder. Quite a contrast to the earlier shots. It is, right? Yeah. And then we come to the whole idea of hot pursuit. Huh? Huh? Because this is about courtship after all. So, <laughs> if you believe this, <laughs> this guy has a bridge to sell you. <laughs> now, he might be in a marine safety sense. Huh? He might have PFTs under the forehead. Yeah, right. But I doubt it somehow. <laughs> oh, no, really. He'll be perfectly safe. Just, just get in there. Hold on. Um, this is a great, this is a great sequence. Uh, the little caption at the bottom says, "But he said it wouldn't do for her to paddle her own beard, so she should get in his boat." I really like the Dilbert necktie that's sticking out in the, in the front like that. So follow this couple through their canoeing adventure. First, we sit and talk about it for a little bit. 
Would you like to go on the camera? Yes, no, maybe. Persuade, persuade, okay. We're getting a little closer, he's moving in. The caption says, a canoe's not in it with a smack to steer a course along love's track. C minus for poetry, A minus for emotional intensity. <laughs> She's agreed. They're getting in the canoe and finding they're paddling off together. I hope to get a canoeing lesson. <laughs> because I think they need some help. But they're in the boat together. If you notice though, She's never in the stern. It's always him paddling and she's going along to the right. <coughs> then we have him. The use of the parasol is a defensive weapon. <laughs> I'm not sure. I've looked at this for a long time. I'm not sure if this and the following images are the same guy and different girls, or different girls and different guys. This is in the morning, right? It's like, would you like to? Oh, no, I couldn't. Would you like to? Oh, no, no, I couldn't. Still the morning, though. Canoe like in the afternoon. Well, the parasol is still up, but they're moving a little closer together. Then we come to canoe like it's sundown. Parasol's gone. I mean, that one, right? Now we're kind of snuggly. He's picked her some flowers, made a little crown for her hair. It's just lovely. Sundown. Canoe like at twilight. Things are heating up. And can do it in the evening, all right. But it's taken the poor guy all day. <laughs> this is a long-term investment. That's why you bring a lunch when you go out on these trips. <laughs> so here, a little ditty at the beginning of that sequence, it said it wouldn't do for her to paddle her own canoe. This whole thing is a theme sparked by a poem. Written by Sarah Bolton, called Paddling Your Own Canoe. Was that a Sarah Bolton joke? Are you casting this person? She was happily married. And actually quite an accomplished writer and poet. But her paddling over the new home was the thing that she was best known for, probably to her mortification. And so this idea of women paddling their own canoe actually became a metaphor for women's independence. And because it was a social history thing, you started to see it reflected in popular culture. Like having your own canoe. Very handsome little Peterborough area whiteboard canoe, by the way. Lovely, lovely little boat. She obviously knows how to use it. Obviously, perfectly at home, paddling her own canoe on the Grand River. We're done building. There again, paddling around canoe. I'm not sure I'd give her quite as many marks for style, but she's out there. She's giving it a try. She's independent. Early 20th century woman paddling her own canoe. She too is now, she's paddling her own canoe. Um, she missed the sea. It's still, it's still tied up. And her grip on the pad is all that secure. So I'm not sure that she can use in her off hours because she's not close to the door. Nonetheless, it's an admirable sentiment about women's independence. Leather postcards from Niagara Falls of all things. I'm paddling my own canoe. <laughs> and you can paddle your own canoe, but you know what? It's a bit lonely, awful lonesome. So that leads us into the other whole genre of these images, which is the all alone genre. Anybody here Brenda Lee say that? You see a lot of these too. There she is. We've got now it's interesting. So She's in the boy spot. The backrest is there. She's in the stern seat, got a paddle. She just needs a paddling partner. So she's going to take a guy for a ride, but when the right guy shows up, that's a bit of a change. All alone. Talk about coming here, you know. It's like, I'm just so alone. I'm just alone. Waiting for you. I'm a canoe, I'm waiting for you. Yeah. And then, being good is such a lonesome job. <laughs> truer, words, truer words were perhaps never uttered. And then we come to song. We started with a song. We'll look at some more songs here. <coughs> so much sheet music about music. They didn't include a copy of Paddle and Madeline Home, probably the 
classic canoe romance song just because everything rhymes in that one. So we'll paddle our own canoe together in my canoe. Paddle, Adela, your little canoe. Now this poor woman, her headband is way too tight. <laughs> you kind of squeeze the top of her head up. <laughs> but they're out there wandering on the river together, paddle Adeline in a little canoe. <laughs> Give me a night in June where we know what's going to happen once they get out on the water together. Again, those amazing pointy ends on that canoe. In a little blue canoe with blue, there's just so many words that rhyme with canoe. I stopped buying this stuff after I had about 40 pieces of shoes because it just goes, it goes on and on and on. I'd rather be the girl in your arms than the girl in your dreams. Of course, it has to happen in a canoe. <laughs> Summer nights, once again. Now she's playing. She's the party out. So we're happy. He actually, I think he's wearing lipstick and eyeshadow. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder at the back story behind, Don't behind some of these images. My Irving, Irving. And then we come to yeah, Nelson, no, Eddie, and Jeanette McDonald supposedly oh. taking a Monty for a paddle in the wilds of Canada. They're actually in the middle of Lake Tahoe, <laughs> tied to a motorboat, but it doesn't matter. Can you push that up a little bit? 1934. Nelson Eddy. If I go out with a paddle, you will get that paddle. Nelson Eddy. He's a Mountie who's been sent north to the Tahoe. <coughs> to catch her brother who supposedly murdered a mountain. But he has another agenda. No. Oh, I can't write I can cite. Cannons to the right. Cannons to the left. There's a shot later on that kind of gives the game away there with your What is it? What's the attraction? In the dial and Amazing photography, actually, for 1934, because they have a camera on a boat, and they're actually shooting this in the middle of the lake. Here it
<laughs> That's a shame. And it, that is the ACA version. It does say American Canoe Association down the side. Uh, or there's Egyptian deity cigarettes. He's got the mandolin. They're both smoking away. Campfires on shore. Just a beautiful night smoking on the water. The other smoke on the water. For those of you who grew up in the 70s. Yeah, I guess. Choosing a cigarette is all a matter of taste, don't you think? Sure, it's a matter of taste. That's why Chesterfield is so popular. And that's why, even 30 years later, we still have a parasol in the canoe. And this one says, watch those camels, Peg. They're nine-tenths of the vacation. <laughs> it's going to be a great trip. <laughs> you can tell already it's going to be a great trip as long as guy thinks about it. Where's the cigarettes? Give me a cigarette. Give me a cigarette. <laughs> and the last word on this topic has to go to a truly comedic genius, without whom no discussion of the romance would be complete. And I'll leave you with Professor Wagstaff. Oh, 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 making love in a, in a canoe in the Canadian <coughs> Bay. Um, and actually, I did share this with John earlier, but I hope he doesn't mind. Please. Uh, last time here. Uh, a couple are making love in a canoe, and they're just full of passion and enthusiasm. And as they, they did take out the middle thwart, and uh, as their, their passion gets carried away and overcomes them, the canoe starts rocking, and the gunnels are taking in water. And slowly but surely, the canoe submerges to lake level, and the couple, to their delight, discovered that it didn't dampen their enthusiasm, it merely served to whet their appetite. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, boom. Actually, I was surprised, I don't know how many of you read the 
instructions in the cosmopolitan put that the edge. They are very explicit. <laughs> it's right Cosmo. To the end. It's Cosmo, after all. And I, I was sort of glad you didn't read them out loud. <laughs> Now we're curious. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up again. Yeah, That's the after second. Now they're curious. You're not too embarrassed. You can read, read out the instructions. No, no, we're not going to read it out loud. You're going to have to come up and read it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> With a bag over your head. Yes, yeah. Brown paper. Anyway, John, all about yeah. the paper. All those extract it with PowerPoint. <laughs> It does say it more local. I think that deserves more than three flames on fire. Yeah, I agree. I would agree. You, you can color it in. On that note, we should have served lunch before. We should have served that. <laughs> On that note, John, I really would like to thank you. I am so delighted I had the opportunity to hear you this time. Um, it was absolutely I'll put back. Well, you're still going to propose something? I want to be nice. Okay. And so I have a little token of our appreciation here. Enjoy. Uh, perhaps you'll come and join us again sometime. Next week we have uh, Fran and Stephen Hill. Uh, they're returning to present part two of their Down East Circle route. And they've done quite a circuit there. And they did a presentation here last year at this time. And it was quite wonderful. So I do hope you'll be able to join us. And then, of course, on June 13th, we have Discovery Harbor. And I did send out an email last night about that. Take a look at it. Take a look at the flyer on the table. Um, and if you're interested, please either contact me or sign up on your way out. Yes? I was just wondering if you've got any explanation why that three flames out of five. After you contact, that oh, no, they do the scoring. OK. <laughs> I'm sure they'd be happy to hear from you. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, sorry, you had a question. Is where did you get all this? What was the date on that? <laughs> the, 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 on the Cosmo thing? 